All right, so macros in Rule 20, they can look very complicated, but these things are actually gonna really enhance your experience at your table in Rule 20. Now, they can look very complicated, like I just said. They almost look like you would need a degree from some major university in order to be able to make them function, but I assure you, they aren't that complicated. And actually, that's what we're gonna go over today. We're gonna go over some basic, simple macros that are gonna allow you to take away some of those six or seven clicks that you normally would have to do in order to make a function happen. It's gonna take one click, and it's gonna really allow you to focus on what's more important in your games, whether it be the role-playing, the nitty-gritty of combat, or just basically your experience in general. Let's do this. What's going on guys? My name is Howard. This is the Blue Collar DM YouTube channel, the channel dedicated to breaking down those barriers for new players and dungeon masters alike. I stream on this channel Monday, Wednesday, Friday here on YouTube and then switch over to Twitch. Link for the Twitch channel down in the description below. Also, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that way you get notified when other content like this comes out for the channel, whether it be Dungeons and Dragons, Roll20, Fantasy Grounds, or any other topics related to tabletop role playing your favorite subject on YouTube. Now, like I said in the intro, Roll20 can be very complicated for new players, especially when you, if you don't have any of these macros, you're gonna be worrying more about how to make the function of the software work rather than actually focusing on your game. And we don't want that. We want all the focus to be on the role playing, the combat, everything that's important to you in your experience in your games, and not so much the computer functions on Roll20. So these macros are gonna kind of help expedite a lot of those functions. And without further ado, let's go over the computer and let's do this. All right, guys, so now that we're on the computer, let's go over to Roll20 and hit up those macros right now. All right, so now you guys can see that I'm in Roll20 and I've got a couple different characters on here. I've got a turn order, I've got some stuff here. I'm just gonna clear that out right now, uh, just so I can show you how the initiative one that I have here works. So first one we're gonna do is this initiative tracker. So say if I wanna add players to my turn order, and the way we do this is that we go to our initiative tracker here, which is the clock. We're gonna select all of our characters here, and then we're just gonna add, if I can, show it better on screen, add turn. And it's gonna throw all the characters in there. Now, this particular macro will only do one turn at a time. Uh, it won't allow you to do a mass macro for all of them. I've tried to figure that out without a pro account. It won't let you do it. Um, it requires a little bit more power by the software. But you can hit one at a time, one by one, and it's gonna actually populate it into the tracker for you, just like you're seeing right here. So we can go all the way around the horn, hit every single one. It's gonna pull the initiative bonus from the character sheet that it is associated with. And it's just going to throw it here into the turn order. We can hit descending, and now we have a good turn order. We can just figure right through as we're going, as we're going through our combat encounter. So I'm going to delete this again, remove all turns, easy enough. And the way we find that macro is we go back up here to our macros, which is going to be these three dots with these three lines. It's more than just macros. It's got rollable tables and decks and stuff like that. But right here is the initiative one I have, and then this is what you have. It's whispering the role to me, so that way I know what the role is, but my players don't necessarily. Once you put in the turn order, they'll know. Um, but if you want to keep that from your players, you can for a little while. And then it's going to at selected token, and it's going to take the initiative bonus off of the sheet related to that token. If the token doesn't have a sheet, it's just going to take plus zero. And then it's going to add it into the tracker, and that's what all this means. And I'll put this macro and all the macros we go over today down in the description below as we're going through this. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. The next thing we have is a dice roller. So if you wanna just roll a random dice, you can make this macro um, and you can have them all populated down here. I only have the D100 one here because I created an actual custom dice macro that's actually gonna prompt you for the dice you wanna do. But if you wanna just have like a D100 macro, a D20 macro, all at the bottom, you can, especially as a DM where you wanna roll on the, the treasure tables, makes it really easy. So you pick number of dice, it's gonna default whatever you have it defaulted as. Then modifier, is mine is gonna be zero because that's what I have the default as and it's gonna populate out a D100 roll for you. Now, to see that, we're actually gonna go over to this macro, and you'll see what it's doing is that, um, as you saw those different windows pop up, it's actually, what these little question marks with these brackets is doing is that it's actually creating that pop-up window that's then asking you in the text, number of dice, then it's got a default value, which is why there's a line there of like, when I asked how many dice, the default value was one, that's where that comes from. Then you put the dice type that you want right here, and then we're adding another bubble window here of modifier, and then the default is zero. And all these brackets kind of just close everything together so the software can compute it out, but again, I'll leave the macro down below. The only thing you have to change when you want to make it a different dice is just change what it says here. So you can make this D20, D10, D4, whatever the case may be. I have actually created my own personal dice roll to make my life a little bit different, a little bit easier, um, so that way I don't have to have 16 buttons down here that's populating this entire area because my screen will get busy and I want some room for my uh, my other buttons. 
So I have number of dice, it's gonna pick dice type, it's defaulting as D20, because that's what I have in here, but I can easily change that to D4. And then modifier, it's gonna default to zero, so we'll just hit enter again, and it's gonna roll a D4 for me. And you can see that right here. It, it actually computes out the same little um, text here for the calculation, but it's just prompting me to actually pick a dice. So that's why I have that one there. And again, I will put that one down below as well. The next thing we're gonna do is if your characters have to make their first character, let's say, maybe they have to roll for their ability score. So we actually have an ability score, 4d6, drop the lowest here. Um, so what it's doing is that it's rolling 4d6 um, six times, so that way you can have your six ability scores between your strength, dexterity, uh, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. And it's gonna give you all these numbers and you can play, have your characters place them wherever they want. Now, as you can see here, we kind of rolled really crappy on all these, um, which is fine. Um, but that's what it's going to kind of spit out for you. And it's going to spit out these 4d6 drop the lowest. And I'll show you that here in the macro as well. Uh, ability scores. So you can see here, it's basically computing like this is one set of data bar, another set of data bar, and it's showing that 4d6 drop the lowest one dice. So that's what we're seeing there. And so again, say if you either have a character has to reroll for a new character, cause maybe they had a character death, or maybe it's the first time they're playing. You can share this with your player characters. So that way they can just easily do that instead of having to roll manually roll them or you can do standard array it's up to you in your game but that's what i like to do is just to have this it also creates a lot of cool randomness too um because the computer i find is much more random than dice sometimes certain people have their favorite dice and those ones roll really well so um, i like that it's more completely random so you get these like interesting scores like you have a 16 here you have a 13 but then you also have a six so where's that six gonna go maybe it goes into intelligence because you have a Maybe it's a barbarian, maybe it's, or maybe it's just like not a very intelligent, uh, very not intelligent cleric or something like that. It just gives good flexibility and, and actually gives some opportunity for some role-playing moments. The next one I have here is actually a group perception macro. And this one's actually very interesting. You can actually change the variables in here very easily. Uh, it requires a little bit of setup, but when I hit it, it's actually gonna give me all my player characters and it's gonna give me all their perceptions and it's gonna whisper it to me. So that way, if I normally would have them make a perception check, I don't want my players to know whether or not they did roll well or not roll well. If that's the case, then I can say that, okay, Flash and Raven, you guys are the only ones that notice this specific thing. But say, let's roll again. Let's see if we can get one where they're all bad. Uh, I have seven characters, so it makes it difficult. Maybe we have something that's stealth really well. Maybe Smash doesn't quite observe one thing, but all the characters know their perception bonuses, so they might think, oh, okay, I'm probably doing okay. Um, but then maybe something sneaks up on them. So you can actually kind of give that little bit of mystery to the perception checks where normally they don't exist when you have everyone roll. So just varies it up a little bit, makes a little bit more tension, which I kind of like. Now this macro uh, is actually a very simple macro. Um, basically it's, we have this slash W as for whisper to the GM. Um, this template just creates that um, little box here that you see the little purple box. Um, there are other templates, but you need other accounts and different, um, um, other assets in order to be able to create those. And sorry about the camera shaking. Um, but right now I just have the default template for roll 20. And then the name of the table is group perception. So that's where we see this up here. Um, and you can change this. And I have an initiative one down here. We'll show you in a second. And then you have your, you just put in the name of whatever your player character is. So I have my player character named Zuli, Raven, Smash, Flash, Hermie, Dozo, Mingus. We have all of those right there. Equals, and then it's gonna roll a D20 and then if we have a modifier, so let's say for Raven, we have a D20 plus five for his, uh, for his perception bonus. It's gonna add that for us. And you can see that right here in this particular calculation on the table. So, and I did that all the way through for all my other characters. So what I would do is I will also leave this in the description. I'll just be putting um, name A, name B, name C, name D um, for you guys to kind of fill it out. And then all you have to do, if you have a perception bonus, you just got to look it up off their character sheets through and into this table, it makes it really easy. And you can do the same thing with initiative. So basically I have the exact same thing here for initiative. We have a group initiative role here and it's gonna add all their initiative roles here with all their modifiers. And it's the same exact table or the same exact macro, pardon me, except I've changed it to initiative. Um, I'll actually make it group initiative. So that way I, um, rem oh no, that's the other one. Uh, group initiative, there it is. Um, and it's the exact same macro, except instead of, um, I changed the name of the macro itself. And then I also changed the name of the table name up in the top. And then I just put in their initiative bonuses. And that's the only thing that it changed. Um, and you can do this with other things. You can do like a group insight. You can do a bunch of other different ability checks, ones that you typically use a lot. And you can actually include that as a GM just to make your life a little bit easier. 
Now the last one um, that I'm gonna do is actually, we've talked about it a little bit before, but it's the Whisper um, macro. And this is good for players or um, GMs. Uh, GMs will like to use this a lot too, just in case there's certain story elements or certain things that you don't want necessarily every single player here to know, but you wanna whisper to one specific character. You can actually click on the whisper button that I have here, and it's gonna say input value message question mark. And I'll show you what that is going to be. And I'll just put in here for YouTube and laughs enter and it's going to whisper that message to only that player character right there so what this macro looks like is if i can get to it it's a slash w with the profile name of the person so keep that in mind it's the profile name then we have this little question mark prompt like we had on some of the other ones and then message and so that's what's as you saw when i clicked on this macro message comes up right here as the input value, and then you have this blank space to put something in. So this works for any of your player characters, but keep in mind, this name here has to be their profile name. So if they haven't changed their profile name, let's say if their name is like Frank and they're playing a character named Jeffrey, you can't put in Whisper Jeffrey. It's not gonna know what to do. You have to put in Whisper Frank. Now, I recommend that your player characters change all their profile names in Rule 20 for your particular campaign because you can do that by campaign. It doesn't go across all of them. I would have them do that so that way it assigns it so that way there's not a whole lot of confusion because I do have some characters down here that it whispers to um, their actual names because that's what they haven't, they haven't changed it over. But I recommend trying to push your characters to change them so that way it makes it a little bit easier. And so then when it whispers, it says whispers to that player character, not whispers to the person that's playing that player character. And so that's basically it for all these macros. So that I hope gives you kind of a good way to start, uh, you, especially as for DMs and even for players, like this initiative macro works for players too. Um, so say if my character is Flash and I wanna put in my initiative into the tracker here, um, and I need to, let's see, add a turn, and then I hit initiative, it's gonna throw that in for me so that, and it's gonna whisper it to the DM. Um, which is nice, but then also it just makes it easier so I don't have to like go into my character sheet over here, find it, and then click initiative. I mean, it's not much of a step, but then it just expedites things a little bit easier if you're using the software to roll your initiative. Um, and you don't have to do any addition or anything like that. It just pops it right out there for you. So with that being said, we're gonna get off the computer and wrap this up. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is gonna end our discussion about these simple macros here in Roll20 that are gonna really enhance and enrich your experience with your game. Now, I'm sure you guys have some questions. Leave those questions down in the comment section below. I'll answer them. We also have a great community that's gonna be more than happy to answer those questions. So don't worry, you'll have your questions answered. If you have some more complicated and more um, specific questions that you need answered, make sure you pop over to the stream. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday here on YouTube. And then I switch over to Twitch. Link for the Twitch channel down in the description below. We actually get into the nitty gritty of whether it be questions you have about campaign prep, whether it be Roll20, Fantasy Grounds, whatever the case may be. And it's helpful because then I can tailor a lot of these specific answers to your specific situation so I can give you the best feedback possible because I want to be a resource for you guys. I want to be basically available to you so that way if you have questions, I'll have those answers for you. Now, I hope you guys learned something today and until next time, happy gaming.